This animation is so clean. I've seen it in a lot of awards winning website and it's such a simple yet effective animation. And I'll remake it using vanilla animation techniques like the request animation frame, the sign function and the linear interpolation. And as always, the live demo and the source code are all available in the description below. All right, so to start this, I have a basic Next.js application here with some HTML and some CSS. And we have something that looks like this just to start this tutorial. And the first thing I want to do here is to create an SVG from scratch. Okay, so what I'm doing here is creating a div as a container. And inside of it, I put an SVG and a path. And then I go in the styling and I make sure everything looks good with the layout. We have a line, which is the container. And that container takes only one pixel of height, which will be the line. And inside of it, we have an SVG in position absolute that has bigger boundaries than one pixel because eventually we're going to make the line wobble and so it needs space to wobble or it's going to go out of the bounds and we're not going to see it anymore. And here I'm just going to create the actual SVG. I'm going to use the use ref hook from React and I'll call it path and I'll give that ref to the path. And since I'm in Next.js, I'm going to specify that this is a client component since I'm using client side hooks. And then I'll initialize the path when it mounts and I can do that inside of the use effect hook. And here I leave the parameters empty so it triggers once. And here I'm going to create a reusable function. I'm going to call it set path. And here inside of the use effect, I'm going to call that function. And I'm also going to have here a let progress and it's going to be equal to zero. And I'm going to use that progress to create the SVG. And eventually I'll change that progress to create the curve. And so I'm going to take that progress and put it in the set path. And the set path will require the progress as a parameter. And now to create the path, I'm going to use a bunch of path commands, which helps to create a definition for the D attribute of the SVG. And so I'm going to have here a path, which is going to be equal to, first of all, I want to move my pen, which is a bit similar to like the canvas API. I'm going to move it to on the X axis, zero. And on the Y axis, I'm going to move it to 50. Now, why 50? Because I've set the SVG to have a height of 100 pixels. And so the middle point of the SVG is 50. And that's why I move my pen in the middle of the SVG to draw a line of one pixel. And the next command I'll use is the quadratic Bezier curve. And that will allow me to create like a curve. And I'll eventually animate that point to create the curve. And so the first thing I need here to set the quadratic Bezier control point in the middle of the SVG is the width of the window. So I'm just going to grab here the inner width from the window. And now I know that my body takes 70 viewport width. And I know that my line takes 100% of it. And so what I can do is have a width, which is equal to the inner width multiplied by 0.7. And that gives me the length of the SVG. And I can then use that to have here the Q command. And on the X axis, it's going to be equal to the width divided by two, which is the middle of the SVG. And on the Y axis, it's going to be equal to 50. And then I need to provide two last points, which is the X and Y here. And they are the end point. And so the end of my SVG on the X axis is the width. And it's also 50 for the Y axis. And here I just realized that I have the same name here, path and path. And so what I'll do is not put it inside of a variable. And so I'm going to delete that. And I'm just going to set it directly by doing path, which is the reference. And so I'm going to do current. And I'm going to do a set attribute NS. And then the namespace, I don't really care. I'm going to put it empty. The qualified name is the D attribute. And then I'm just going to give it the value. And finally, I'll just add here for the line SVG path. I'm just going to add a stroke width of one pixel and a stroke white and no fill. And here we can see that I have now my line. And if I look at it, I can see that I have my SVG. I have my path with the D attribute that we just created. And layout wise, it's only an element of one pixel, which is good. And now we can start curving that line. And the first thing I'm going to do here is to add a box, which I'm going to use for nothing else but adding the event listeners on it. And that way I can create like custom bounds for my mouse event listeners. I don't have to respect the bounds of like the line or the SVG. And so I'm going to create a div and I'm going to call it the box. And then I can go here in the styling and I can specify that there's a box inside of a line and it's going to have a height of 40 pixel. And I'm just going to add a border just so we can see what's going on. And here we can see it's here. And I'm just going to put it in position relative and do a minus a top minus 20 pixels. And so now the SVG line should be centered here. And so yeah, it kind of looks like this. I have my box and I'm going to add an event listener on it. I'm going to start with the mouse move event and I'm just going to call a manage mouse move function. And here the first thing I can extract from the event is the movement Y of the mouse. And I'll simply increment the progress with the movement Y of the mouse. And here I'll set the path with the progress. And now in my set path function here, I'm actually not using the progress. And so what I'm going to do here is change this, which is the control point of the SVG Bezier curve. If we look at the documentation here, you're going to see that this is what I'm modifying here, the control point of the Bezier curve. And so if I'm changing the Y value, it's going to change the curve. And so I'm just going to do 50, which is the middle point, which is a null curve. And I'm just going to add the progress and we can save this and we can see what we have. And it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I believe I just need to change here in the box. I just need to specify that 
that the Zen index should be one. And so the box is going to be on top of everything else. And now, as you can see, as I'm moving my mouse inside of the box, I'm actually curving the line. So yeah, now that I'm able to curve the line, the next step is to listen when I leave and on leave, I'm just gonna animate out the line, which will be like this wobbly animation. So yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna add a mouse leave event here, manage mouse leave. And I'm gonna have a function manage mouse leave. And then I'm gonna have a function here. I'm just gonna call that animate out function. All right, so this animate out function is like the core of this tutorial. It's gonna be using a ton of different concepts like the sign function, the linear interpolation and recursivity. So the first thing we wanna do here is create a recursive function, meaning it's gonna call itself. And so I'm going to have a request animation frame of itself. So nothing too complicated. This animate out function will basically run at infinity as it's in this current state now. Obviously, we're going to add an exit condition, but for now, we can just leave it at that. And after that, I'm going to create a value called time that I'm going to continually increment. And so I'm going to have a time which is going to be equal to zero for now. And then inside of that animation, I can do time plus equal 0 0.2. And that 0 0.2 will basically be the speed of the animation. We can tweak that later. And then we're going to use the sign function. And we really need to understand that to understand the animation. The sign function is basically a wobbly line as well that goes like this at infinity, depending on the value that you give it. Now, if you give the math sign a value of pi, it's going to return you a value of zero. If you give it a value of two multiplied by pi, it's going to return you a value of zero as well. And it's also important to notice that the sign function always returns a value between one and minus one or minus one and one, right? So at most it will give us one and at least it will give us minus one. And if you give it pi divided by two here, it's going to give us one. So to me, this is all really abstract and like it took me a long time to understand it. So if you don't really understand what, what the hell is going on, it's fine. I'm going to do a concrete example here. So we're basically going to have here a new progress which is going to be equal to progress, which is a value that's being changed by the movement of the mouse, right? This is what we did here. And so I'm just going to take that progress and I'm going to multiply it by the math sign function. And inside of that sign function, I'm going to give it the time. And here I'm just going to do set path of that new progress. So you're going to see here, I'm just going to move my mouse and I'm going to move away. And I have something like this. Now I have a wobbly line that just goes at infinity. And why does it look like that? Because I have a time that I'm continually incrementing and I'm just multiplying that by the progress. Now we have two problems. Now one, obviously it goes at infinity, but another more subtle problem is if I move my mouse and I move out, you're gonna see that my line is jumping. It's jumping to a value and it's not like curving from the current point. So I'm gonna do it again. You're going to see that it's kind of jumping and then it starts to wobble. And that's because the first frame of the value here, the math sign multiplied by the time. And my time is set at zero at first. And so the math sign, if I give it a value of zero, returns me zero. And so if I multiply the progress by zero, the new progress is now zero. And so it's going to reset the line to a flat point, to a null point. And that's what we see here. The line is resetting before it starts wobbling. And so if I want the curve to start wobbling at its current point, I basically want to have the math sign function here be equal to one for the first frame. And if I look at the value here, one is returned when I give it pi divided by two. And so instead of initializing the time at zero, I'm going to initialize the time here at pi divided by two. You can see that the line starts wobbling at its current point, which is exactly what we want. And now we have to fix the second problem, which is well, we don't want the curve to go at infinity like that. And that's why we're going to use the linear interpolation. You give it three values, a current value, a target value and an amount. And it's going to basically put the current value closer to the target value by a certain amount. And so for example, if we give the lerp a value of 10 and we say bring that value towards zero by 10%, then it's going to return us nine. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to have my lerp and I'm just going to do that the progress is now equal to a linear interpolation of the progress. And then I'm going to choose an amount. I'm going to do 0.1. So that value is like the same as what I just explained. And let's see what we have. I'm going to test this. And you can see that the line is resetting to a null point. Now, of course, it's like resetting really fast. And so I'm just going to reduce the amount. Instead of being 10%, I'm going to do 2.5%. And now we can see that we have a line that's wobbling and it's going back to like a point zero. But now if we think performance wise, we have a request animation frame that's running at infinity, which is not really the best. So I'm just going to add an exit condition here. I'm going to check 
if the absolute value of the progress, because it can be positive or negative, if it's bigger than 0.75, I'm going to recall the animate out function. And else, meaning the curve is almost at a null point since it's smaller than 0.75. And so here I'm just going to call a function called reset animation. And I can create that reset animation function here. And very simply here, what I'm going to do is reset the time to math.py divided by two. And I'm also going to reset the progress to zero. And you're going to see we actually have a problem here. I'm just going to try to break the animation by playing with it. So you're going to see, I'm just going to go really fast over it. And you can see that this just looks really weird. And that's because we can actually have in this code, multiple instances of animate out function chains running at the same time. And so every time I move my mouse away from the box, it's calling that chain again, and multiple chain can stack on top of each other's. And like this sounded like really complicated for nothing. But the concept is we basically just want to have one request animation running at the same time. We don't want to start multiple chains because it creates bugs. What I'm going to do here is create a request ID and I'm going to have it initialized at null first. And here, every time I call a new request animation frame, I'm going to have that request ID be that request animation frame. And then I'm going to add another event listener here and I'm going to do manage mouse enter. And what this guy will do basically is it's going to check if there is a request animation frame frame currently running, it's going to do a cancel request animation frame, and I'm going to cancel that request ID. And I'm also going to reset the animation. And now we can see that I just solved my problem, I can pass I can try to fuck with it. And it's just working every time I move my mouse on top of it, and there is no glitch anymore. And so now the animation is working fine. But to me, it's a bit boring. All right, it just looks like a really small curve. I would like it to be like more nice than that. And so what I'm going to do is expand the height of the box when I hover on it. I use that technique in a lot of my animations. I'm just going to do a line box. And when I hover on it, I'm going to boost the height to be equal to, to 150. And then I'm just going to do the top minus 75. So it stays in the middle. And then you're going to see that when I hover on it, the boundaries expand. And now I can curve even more. Right. But I'm still having this small initial boundaries. And so the effect looks natural, right? I need to be close to the line to activate it. But then I can stretch it more than the initial value. And then I can release and it has this animation. And now I'm just going to remove the border. So we can actually see what's going on. And we have something like this, a nice wobbly line. And that's a very clean animation that we made using pure vanilla JavaScript. And so the tutorial could end here because most awards winning website, that's exactly the effect that we have. But I thought about it. And there's actually a way to make it even nicer. If we look at the control point of the Bezier curve right now, we're just changing the y value of it. And so it goes up and it goes down like this. But we're not changing the x value of it, it would actually look something like this. If we have an x that's in the middle, it just curves normally like we have right now. But if we have an x situated at zero, which is the starting point, we're going to have the curve be like this. And if we have the x equal to one, we're going to have the curve looks like this. And it's going to be a much more natural effect. So let's try to do this. I'm going to create another value. I'm going to call it x. And I'm going to have the x be the middle point at first, which is basically what we have here. So I'm just going to take the x and I'm going to multiply the width by the x. And with that, we have like basically the same thing. And now I just need to find a way to change the x value. And so I'm going to go here in the manage mouse move. And what I want to do here is if my mouse is in the middle, the x should be equal to 0.5. If it's at the beginning, it should be zero. And if it's at the end, it should be one. So that's basically the position of the mouse relative to the length of the SVG on the x value. And so the first thing I have access to is the client x here from the event. And then another thing that I need is the left position of the SVG. And so I'm going to do path.current and I can get the left position from the bounding. And so I can do get bounding client rect. And from that value, I extract the left. And so I can have my x be equal to the client x minus the left. And so this is going to give us the absolute position of the mouse, but we want it to be relative. So I'm just going to divide it by the width of the SVG. So I can grab the width, and I can divide it by the width. And now the x is a value between zero and one depending on where we are along the SVG. And let's see what we have. If I go in the middle, we have this animation nice. But let's see if I go at the beginning, I'm actually curving C from the beginning. And if I go at the left, I'm curving at the left here. And so yeah, that's basically the animation. We have something like this very nice that we can curve from different angles. So yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. I don't usually do vanilla JavaScript, but sometimes it's good to understand the basics of what's happening behind the scenes. So if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.